have a lot of like franchise players, like I, I said before, about guys. I hate who, to say this, brother. They do have a history. All right, but you, so you're interrupting me. Don't but, interrupt. But me. but they don't acknowledge it the way the Yankees. But do. that's my issue. Is for a team that that really desperately is in need of history. Here's history. Here's the '86 Mets. One of, and I can't disagree with you. One of the great baseball teams of all time. And what do the Mets do? They have a day. They don't really do a whole lot as far as publicizing that day. They don't celebrate that day on their own network where they can program whatever they want. They if they it. want to say, hey, play this every day, right? they could. I it's know. their network. And instead, what do they do? They broadcast this thing online, and then they bury it. Yeah. Why? Know. This is the, the, I mean, the 86 Mets were probably the high point in this franchise's history. Of course. So why not celebrate that as often as possible? I, I agree with you. I, I just, that's that's my point. The Yankees, like you said, the reason they do this better than anybody is because they have a lot to celebrate. They do. And and, and one thing that they do well is they they always, I mean, they they have a long history. That's one thing. But, but they always acknowledge, you know, the, you know. It, like on Old Timers Day, you know they have it every year. Yeah, a lot of many teams do that. The Mets don't. And and Old Timers Day was I'll, I'll be honest, I thought it was starting to lose a little bit of its charm, but now you have another wave with right. Posada and Pettit and Bernie and, and Coney and Jeter and all of well, these. Jeter's guys. not going to show up. Every Jeter, year. Jeter will show up every year. Jeter's going to be he's going to be the next the next Joe DiMaggio as far as Old Timers Day goes. You, you sure he hasn't? Did he show up last year? I, I, I guess he was waiting for his number to be retired. But that he he's going to be that guy. He's going to come in once a year. They're going to celebrate him. And he, he at some point, he will be introduced as the greatest living Yankee. Karen, mark my words. It might not happen for 20 or 30 I years. I agree with that. But he will be introduced at some point as the well, greatest living that, Yankee. That leads to my next question. Um, a lot of people feel, because he wasn't a showboater, uh, that yeah, maybe Derek Jeter's not as good as people say. But then you realize you look at Stupid. his numbers. You look at his Who numbers. Who says that? Over thirty six hundred hits. I mean, what number six? No, thirty was thirty four sixty five. Oh, I'm sorry, I was reversing the numbers. Yes, thirty four. But sixth all time. Right. right. All right. So, Anybody who says that Derek Jeter is over it, first of all, if you think Derek Jeter is over it, call in the show so I can make fun of you. All right. Five one six five seven two seven four four zero. Call in so I can make you sound like the dope that you are. But any because my my friend Croce says that he the, the idiot from Boston. He's he's always talking Your about friend. yeah he's always talking about how Derek Jeter is overrated and I'm like Croach five people in baseball history have more hits than him how can he be overrated I agree you can't you can't thirty four hundred hits I know he, and you know what I like about him you know he there was a certain quietness that but he always came through uh, the, Jeter was a clutch guy you know the what's what was his three thousand three thousand hit home run home run his last hit is in Yankee Stadium. history with an exclamation point yeah. His last hit great, was an RBI call by Mike, single. Okay. You know? Yeah, RBI, RBI single to right field that drove in a game-winning run. Yep. So, And, and, and everybody knew because you could see. I remember watching that game, and you could see everything develop where I forget who, uh, who the closer was, but they, they blew the save. Right. And then the Yankees came up in the next inning, and, and, and this guy, um, Antoine Richardson, was, was the runner at second base. And Jeter comes up, and it all built up to this moment. There's not a Yankee fan alive who didn't know that Jeter was going to get a hit in that situation. Of course. And and what did he do? Not just a hit, but punches a single to right field, as 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 Sterling says, and it, it makes me cringe when he says it though. But very Jeterian. Well, Jeter liked going right field a lot. Yeah, of course. Which you know, that was his power zone, right center. Was, he loved to go to right field, which is unusual for hitters because usually they go. You know, if you're right handed, I, like, you I did that when I played softball. I did that. I like to go to right center. I did too. I like you know. Because everyone's not expecting it. I was. I wasn't. I wasn't a pull guy. No, you weren't. Because that was like, you know, I just like getting hits. I would hit line drives, and most people when they play softball, they're just looking to, to, to you know, hit Locking. one, hit one as long as they can. Right. So they're going to pull, but they're going to, you know, sell out for the swing. I got hits. So uh, what else about the ceremony? Were you happy with or not happy? Uh, well, I, I certainly wasn't. Well, I'll tell you what. The one I'll thing. I'll tell you that, what. Let's hold on to that. All right. What are we going to We're going to take a break right now. All right. Let's now. take a break and we'll come back and talk more Derek press, Jeter. We're, you're listening to From the Press Box right here on 90.3 WHPC 516 572 7440 is the number to call in. And Tim, you're on Twitter yeah. at. Check out, well, check out the Facebook live feed. You can see my awesome Derek Jeter t shirt. Okay. Uh, and I'm on uh, Twitter at Real Tim Leonard. Yo, what happened to you here? You have to experience what I just experienced. What'd you do? Stick your finger in an electric outlet or something? Close. 
I just listened to Electric Air. Electric Air. Electric Air. Can everyone stop repeating Electric Air and tell me what Electric Air is? Electric Air will get your heart racing, neurons sparking, and lips smiling. Join me, Tova, as I shock your ears with EDM's greatest hits. Five out of five doctors agree one hour of Electric Air every week is just what you need to increase your energy and leave you feeling stimulated. Side effects may include uncontrollable mood swings, shuffling, and in some extreme cases, headbanging. Too much headbanging, huh? Dude, those side effects are serious. Seriously amazing. <laughs> so join me every Wednesday night at 8 for Electric Air on the voice of NASA Community College 90.3 WHPC. Look over there. I think, is that a bird? No, I think it's a plane. Yeah, you're right. It's pulling a banner. The bright... The brighter side. Hi, I'm Sarah Albertson, host of The Brighter Side, a show showing a brighter side of the world. Weekly guests who are sharing their stories in hopes of moving and inspiring others to do good in our world. The brighter it is, the better. I want to experience the brighter side. Listen Wednesday afternoons at 4 and Sunday nights at 11.30 on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Bring on the positivity. Hey, sports fans, are you looking for grand slams? Well, we got them. Penalty shots? Oh, yeah. Touchdowns? Tons of them. Buzzer beaters? All you could ever want. Hey, through the good times and the bad times, it's all sports all the time. Hi, this is Jacob Volk. Are you a diehard sports fan like me? Then tune in to Beyond the Game every Friday afternoon at 3, also available as a podcast on iTunes. I'm joined by Brandon Johnson, Dominic Arbolino, and Eric Fischetti to break down the latest and greatest in sports. It's all on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. 90.3 WHPC. Hmm. From the press box right here. Every Monday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., part of the WHPC Sports Network. Mondays from the press box, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tuesdays, a home stretch, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Thursdays, sports talk, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. And beyond the game, Fridays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. So we got you covered. Talking about Derek Jeter, his retirement uh, ceremony yesterday at Yankee Stadium. Um, everyone was there except A-Rod. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't there. Well, you aren't there, but a I was, wasn't I was there. celebrating Mother's Day. So was with, I. With I was, my mom. Happy was, Mother's Day to everybody out there, by the way. I was there with you. So, But it was interesting that A-Rod, you know, they literally had everyone. You know, they well, had, but I told you this yesterday. Had, the, real, the reason that A-Rod wasn't there was because A-Rod is a distraction. And A-Rod realizes that. And, I, and I'm sure that, that A-Rod would have liked to have been there and... and you know, would have liked to have celebrated with with a guy he still regards as a friend. I'm sure, but you know, Jeter, I'm not so so sure. Well, the, uh, you know, recognizes him as a friend anymore. But A Rod is the, it's a distraction. The question about A Rod will be, and then I want to go back to the ceremony. Mm-hmm. Will he show for Old Timers Day? Okay, will they Rod. invite him? Well, don't don't be so sure he's going to be invited. I'm just saying, will will he be invited? You know, those are those are two questions. Then again, they didn't invite Joe Pepitone for a long time. But those are going to be two questions: is a will they invite him, which is up for debate at this point, and b will he show up? Because because you have to you have to remember if A Rod shows up for Old Timers Day, he's agreeing to be grilled by the reporters. Yeah, but you know what? That's that he, comes with it. He's going to be on TV. You know, he's going to be a Fox guy. So, but, but who's going to ask him a tough question? You know, <laughs> he'll he'll show up maybe for the anniversaries of the two thousand nine team. That's, That's a long right. ways away. Well, tenth anniversary is in two years. Yeah. So but, anyway, what else about uh, Derek Jeter's well, retirement? The one like? thing that Jeter said in his speech that that wasn't you know, I mean, he thanked the Yankees and he thanked George Steinbrenner and of course he thanked the fans. You know, those are pretty standard. Jeter speeches. Yeah, it reminded me of the speech that he made. It was very impromptu uh, after the uh, last game in the old stadium, where basically he just grabbed a mic or somebody handed him a mic, and it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll say something. And he was lauded for that speech because it was completely off the cuff and just, okay, let me just talk for a couple minutes. And it was very heartfelt and very sincere, and, and people really, really loved the message because he was talking about what a great old building it was, but now it's time to go make some new history in the new building. So, you know, there was positivity there. There was sentimentality. 
And and there was a lot of that with with this speech yesterday. Um, but the one thing that Jeter said, and and he, and he said, I'm, I'm saying this humbly, but people ask me if there's is, if there's a player that I would trade places with in 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 history currently or in his, in history. And he said humbly, uh, I'll say no. And I'm like, and I was th- sitting there thinking when he said it, who would he trade places with, and why? He's Derek Jeter, the guy made like two hundred and fifty million dollars in his career. He, he's he's married to a smoking hot woman. He's he's dated most of the hot women in the in in the country who 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 were in his age range. I, I mean, why would Derek Jeter trade places with anybody? The guy's had the charmed life. Well, he's uh, he, and he dated all these women quietly. Well, and you know, he the speech. I wrote down two words about the speech, short and classy. That's what it was. I thought it, it was, was too short. I well, thought, I, and I thought it was a little generic. Because he doesn't he doesn't want to go on. The The thing that, that people, the mistakes that they make when they, when they speak publicly or make speeches is they go on too long. And, and then you lose the attention of the people. You know, you, you would rather you would rather speak for, quote unquote, not long enough than speak too long. And have people say, well, geez, I wish that was a couple minutes shorter. That's you know? true. Leave them wanting more. That's true. And 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 that's that's what Derek Jeter did with, with, with you know, this speech. I'm sure I'm sure when he gets into the Hall of Fame in twenty twenty as a first ballot guy, and who knows, maybe the first ever unanimous uh election into the Hall of Fame, I guarantee you his Hall of Fame speech won't be more than fifteen minutes. Probably. And and, and as far as Hall of Fame speeches go, that's really short. All right. The only the only Hall of Fame speech that I remember that was shorter was Bill Mazeroski, and that was only because he couldn't speak because he was so overwhelmed, overcome by emotions. Every time he tried to talk, he, his voice would crack. He'd start to cry. He tried it like four or five times, and then he said, you know what, I'm done. I can't oh. do this anymore. Yeah. So, and, and God bless him. It was, it was beautiful, because I, and I covered that, but that was the same, the same year that Dave Winfield went in. Right. And Dave Winfield was sitting there thanking his accountant and his lawyers, and it was all like corporate Winfield. And I'm like, what's going on yeah, here? Like, this isn't careful. baseball. Yeah. You're, thanking, you're thanking your team, but your team is all your money, guys. And right. then here comes Bill Mazeroski, and Bill Mazeroski is 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 so overwhelmed because I don't think he ever actually thought he'd be in the Hall of Fame. Let's be and, honest. And here's a lifetime baseball guy. He did. Be- and, I and, mean, he played pretty well, but he wasn't a Hall of Fame. Yeah, but that is my point: is that he he's a guy who who is, is such a baseball guy, whereas Winfield was this corporate guy. Right. That's the difference, and that and Jeter. He's not that much of a baseball guy. He loved to play the game, but he's admitted he doesn't watch the game. Yeah, well. And I mean, he's still trying to buy the Florida Marlins with with Jeb Bush. I don't know how and how wise now, that was that, uh, to, that to combine the deal with Jeb. Doesn't happen. But yeah, the 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 deal supposedly is 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 falling apart. They need to find more money, guys, because apparently Major League Baseball wants any any uh, groups looking to buy a team to not have their own debt. And, and to have the cash that they need, and, and the deal is being reported at one point three four billion. It's, it's a horrible which, price, which is 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 probably about three hundred million more than they should be paying. But they need they need more money, guys, to, for thank for this the, deal. I don't I thank I don't the know LA much, Dodgers for that. They well, overpriced yeah, that team. But I don't I don't know how much money Jeter's putting in. I'm sure it's not that much. You know, I would I would assume. Probably no more than twenty million from well, we Jeter. Don't, we don't. We can't expect. That. I, I'm. I'm. I'm just assuming. But yeah. you know, considering how much money he made in his career, he's. I. I. I can almost assure you that that he's not putting in that much. But obviously, his name being connected to this is is a big deal for for the purchase. Right. So, um, you know, I, I thought the speech was okay. He mentioned the, the Steinbrenner family. He mentioned George Steinbrenner. Uh, one of the few names he actually mentioned. He didn't mention Joe Torre. He thanked his coaches. He thanked his managers. Yeah, he just, Coaches, managers, yeah. play teammates. He didn't thank. He didn't really thank a lot of guys uh, individually. You so. know what I wish they could have done? Um, they can't retire his number per se, but Bobby Mercer, longtime Yankee announcer, wore um, number one and number two, and one both, and both two. retired. Right. So you wish you can attach Mercer's name to one of those numbers, just because he was mm-hmm. there for so long and he was so popular as a. Yankee and then Yankee broadcaster. I I am a big Bobby Mercer. Bobby player. Mercer has his place in Yankee history, but yeah. not as a retired number. Well, just it's already retired, so you just maybe put you know, hey, Bobby Mercer wore this number also, mm. long time Yankee, you know, long time Yankee broadcaster. I would disagree. 
Well, you know, that's part of why Rizzuto is out there. Love, love.